In the 1990s, Mortal Kombat became a global phenomenon, spawning movies. In each of us, there burns the fury of a warrior. Albums of confrontational techno. And a live action tour. What? What helps children be able to be uh, con concerned about violence? Yes, evil sorcerer Shang Tsung, whatever you say. As with anything successful, lots of games wanted to hop on the bandwagon and grab some of that blood-soaked cash for themselves. But most of them soon realized you can't just dress your mate in a karate gi, film him doing some kicks in front of a green screen, and have a smash hit video game on your hands. Here are the five most egregious Mortal Kombat clones. That was clones with a K, by the way, in case you were in any doubt. Chow no mercy! Part of Mortal Kombat's success was due to its digitized characters, which gave the whole thing a realistic look. Even if, years later, you realize that they took advantage of that to double up the actors, and that Shang Tsung was just Sub-Zero in a fright wig with a sharpie beard. So that's what Handmade Software did for their Mortal Kombat ripoff Kasumi Ninja, digitizing their actors, adding a bunch of gory finishing moves, and waiting for the cash and acclaim to roll in. Unfortunately for them, the limitations of the Atari Jaguar meant that it looked terrible and was incredibly ponderous to play, and the majority of their characters were crude racial stereotypes, including a Native American character who scalps people, and a Scottish guy who can shoot fireballs by lifting his kilt. Beginning to see why this didn't catch on, to be honest. Long before Naughty Dog was wowing PlayStation owners with the likes of The Last of Us and the Uncharted series, the studio was making Way of the Warrior, a Mortal Kombat ripoff with an incredibly convoluted story, which involved what looks like the Necronomicon from Evil Dead, but is in fact the Book of Fighting, a compendium of the world's greatest fighters. According to this book, the world's greatest fighters include a doughy Australian guy called Shaky Jake, a stockbroker, maybe? And a buff military guy called Major Gaines. You don't get writing like that in The Last of Us. Total carnage. Super carnage. Way of the Warrior also included fatalities, although most of them seemed to betray a distinct lack of understanding of human anatomy. Either that or all the competitors had some kind of degenerative wasting condition and were just a light tap away from falling to pieces anyway. Shocking. Ninja wings. Kill. Designed to be Data East's answer to Mortal Kombat, Tattoo Assassins was, bizarrely, directed by Bob Gale, the screenwriter of Back to the Future. So what story did this bona fide master of screenwriting come up with for the game? Well, it's to do with magic tattoo ink that makes tattoos come to life and then they kill people. Now Back to the Future 3 starts to make a lot more sense. Added to this was an eclectic cast that included an ice skater who wore her ice skates during fights, which can't have been a good idea, a cyber mercenary called AC Current, yes really, a guy called Derek, and a stripper, because of course. Still, the game included 2,196 finishing moves, which ranged from your standard grisly fatalities, to animalities before they'd been done in Mortal Kombat, to whatever the f*** this is, to magicking your opponent's clothes off. Tattoo Assassins was never formally released, mostly because it was terrible, but still, what other fighting game lets you fire a skeleton rock star out of your chest to explode your opponent with guitar riffs? I mean, I assume you can't do that in Street Fighter, I haven't actually checked. Derek win. <laughs> Though the characters in Bloodstorm were drawn rather than digitized actors, it was still very much attempting to horn in on Mortal Kombat's racket with its ultra-gory gameplay. They even persuaded Daniel Pacina, the actor who portrayed Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat, to jump ship from Midway and appear in Bloodstorm ads. Here he is enjoying a rousing game of one-handed Bloodstorm as Player 2 for some reason. What set Bloodstorm apart was the fact that you could delimb your opponents and the match would carry on, and the fact that you could do fatalities at the end of any round, giving us the interesting spectacle of someone getting their head punched off, then getting ready for round two, none the worse for wear. That's right, Freon, walk it off. Go to hell! Shadow War of Succession was another 3DO Mortal Kombat clone that came out in 1994, which, hang on, did all these games come out in 1994? Man, what a year for terrible beat-em-ups. Anyway, it's about a criminal organization whose boss dies and then his top lieutenants battle it out to see who's going to be the new boss. Chances are they'll be better than the old boss because he's someone who made his top lieutenants a janitor, your dad, and an undercover FBI agent cosplaying as Dick Tracy. Defeat an opponent and the game will prompt you to finish them, but the programmers didn't actually bother to create any finishes, so you can just wander over to them and jab them in the face to end the round. Is that all you got? 
Is that all you got? I could ask you the same thing, Shadow War of Succession. So, those were five Mortal Kombat clones that are best left forgotten. Know of something even worse? Sound off in the comments below and like and subscribe for more videos like this from outside Xbox. Bye! And remember, Mortal Kombat is totally true to life. Or is that death?